Hey, what's up everybody? Dustin here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today, I'll be showing you how to rebuild a Polaris CVT clutch. All right, so today I'll be showing you how to rebuild the clutches on a 2014 Polaris Razor XP1000. Now, the style of CVT clutch can be found on a wide variety of Polaris side-by-sides, but will vary in design slightly from year to year, but they all operate under the same principle. Now, when it comes to inspecting and servicing those wear items, you will want to do so as necessary and reference your service manual for that specific information. So today, we're going to be showing you how to service the wear items on your Polaris CVT clutch. All right, to service your clutches, you're going to need quite a few tools. So to start, you're definitely going to need a torch so that we can heat the primary spider nut and get it removed. You will need a breaker bar as we will be dealing with some large amounts of torque as well as a couple torque wrenches. Now we have a primary clutch remover. We have a punch here as well as a couple chisels which we'll show you how to use those later. And then we've got a basic set of hand tools that we will identify as we use them. Now you will definitely want some snap ring pliers, a mallet and hammer. Now for cleaning, we've got some contact cleaner, which we'll use to clean the sheaves, as well as some Scotch-Brite to service the faces of them. Now for replacement parts, we've got a variety of OEM parts and aftermarket that are available on our website. So here you can see we have replacement shift weights, the rollers and pins, and much more. Now you will need some Loctite 620 and 7088. If you can't get your hands on these, there are some equivalents out there that you can find and use that will be just fine. Now for safety items, we've got some safety glasses, rubber gloves, and a painter's mask, and we'll explain why you'll want to have those in a little bit. Then additionally, you will want a paint pen and a permanent marker to index the clutch. Now as far as aftermarket tools that we've got here, we've got a few products from SLP. We've got a roll pin punch, as well as the primary clutch holder, this cool screwdriver that will allow for easy removal of the clutch cover. Then we've got our spider nut tool, the spider tool, the belt spreading tool, as well as the SLP primary clutch holder and the SLP clutch compression tool. Now, it's always great to reference your service manual for proper procedures, specifications, and special tools that you will need. All right, to begin, we need to remove the intake boot for the clutch cover. So to do that, we're gonna take off this 10 millimeter hex head bolt. Next, we can remove the two band clamps that secure the intake pipe to the clutch cover. First, we'll start with the bottom one, then we can move to the top. Then we can remove the boot. Next, we can remove the eight bolts that secure the clutch cover to the housing. And for this, we'll be using our SLP clutch cover removal tool. With the eight fasteners removed, we can now remove the clutch cover. Take some compressed air and be sure to wear a painter's mask so you don't inhale the fine dust, but blow some of that air on there and blow out all the dirt and debris that are coating your clutches. You'd be surprised at how much dust they will accumulate. Next, we need to remove the drive belt. To do that, we'll be using our clutch compression tool. Compress the clutch, then we can begin to work the belt off of the sheave. Next, we can remove the primary clutch, and to do that, we'll be using our clutch holding tool and a 21 millimeter socket with breaker bar. Remove the bolt, remove the clutch holding tool. Then we can remount the primary holding tool on the opposite side that we had it on before. We need to rotate the primary clutch around so that the handle is resting on a solid fixed position. Then we can take our primary clutch removing tool Insert it into the primary clutch. Now we'll be using a 22 millimeter socket with extension as well as our breaker bar. Now as we begin to thread the primary removal tool, it's going to hold on to the primary clutch and push against the crankshaft. Once enough pressure has been reached, the clutch will pop off of the crankshaft. So just be ready for that. Once the clutch has been relieved from the crankshaft, you can remove the primary clutch holding tool and remove the primary clutch. Once the primary clutch has been removed from the crankshaft, you can remove the primary clutch puller from the primary clutch. Next, we can remove the secondary clutch. For this, we'll be using a 15 millimeter socket with 3 8 inch drive ratchet. 
Now you want to hold on to the secondary clutch. There isn't as much torque on this bolt. Remove the bolt. And you should be able to just grab the, the secondary clutch and pull it free. All right, now before we begin, if you're curious as to whether or not your clutch needs to be rebuilt or maintenance, be sure to check out our Polaris CVT clutch inspection video on how to do just that. All right, now before we tear down the primary, there's a few things that we need to do first. We need to index the primary clutch, so that way when we go to put it back together, we put it back in the same order that the parts were removed. So for this, we're going to use a paint pen. We're going to be marking the spider cover, the spider itself, the movable sheave, and the fixed sheave. This will help us when we go to put the clutch back together. Now we can take and place this into the clutch compressor and remove the six fasteners that retain the spider cover to the primary clutch. For this, we'll be using a 3 8 inch socket and a quarter inch driver. All right, so now that we've got the bolts removed from the spider cover, we can pull it free from the primary, along with the spring and the limiter spacers. So once you have these components removed, you'll just want to give them a good quick inspection. On the spider cover here, you want to take a look at the bushing and check it for any excessive wear, discoloration, or anything that just kind of jumps out to you. If that's the case, you'll definitely want to replace the bushing. Now you'll also want to inspect the shaft where this bushing rides along. You'll want to inspect it for discoloration, any kind of galling or excessive wear. If that's the case, you'll definitely want to replace the primary assembly. Now, when it comes to removing the spider nut and the spider, there's a considerable amount of force that will be applied to this in order to get the assembly apart. Now, to do that, SLP makes a really cool tool that will plug in to your receiver hitch that will act as the anchor point so that you can mount the primary clutch to it and get these components removed. Now, they also make a really cool clutch tapered holding tool, which we'll be using today. When we go to use these tools, we're going to want to make sure that the mating surfaces are absolutely clean. So we'll take some contact cleaner, we'll spray off the taper holding tool, as well as the inner diameter on the back side of the primary. Once these have been thoroughly cleaned, we can then take the taper holding tool, we're going to set it into the back side of the primary, and then with it sitting right side up, we're going to take the bolt that it comes with, take and thread this into place, and then torque it to 96 foot-pounds. All right, so now that we've got our drive clutch taper holding tool securely mounted to our primary clutch, we need to take this over to the shop because our bench mounted vise is not anchored to the concrete. So we're gonna take this over there and show you how to finish the disassembly of the primary. Heat the spider nut, then take the spider nut tool and breaker bar and remove the spider nut. Next, heat the area around the spider, then use the spider tool and along with breaker bar to remove the spider. All right, so we're back here in the studio. We've got the primary clutches spider and spider nut removed. So we're gonna pull these apart and we're gonna lay them out in the order that they are removed from the clutch. Now, once we get all the parts laid out and removed, we are then going to spray them down with some contact cleaner and clean them all up. And then we're gonna come back and service some of these components. All right, so now that we've got all of our parts nice and cleaned off, we're gonna take and remove our fixed sheave from the vise and we're going to place the spider into the vise with some soft jaws. All right, so now that we've got our spider placed into our soft jaws, we're going to grab our chisels. And you can use something other than a chisel, it just has to have a nice sharp edge on it. And we're going to be pressing into the button and we're gonna slowly work it out of the, the hole that it sits in, just like that. So we're gonna go through and do this to all six sides. All right, so now we can take our punch and hammer. We're going to drive the pins that are beneath the buttons through the spider. Now these pins are what retain the slider rollers inside of the spider. So we're gonna drive these pins out on all three sides of the spider. Now taking a look at the roller bushing pins and thrust washers, you can see that these are incredibly worn and are definitely due for service. You can see that the thrust washers are different thicknesses due to extreme wear and the thrust washer that was on this roller bushing and pin setup is just completely gone. All right, so here we've got our replacement parts lined out. We've got six new buttons, six new thrust washers, three new roller bushings and three new roller bushing pins. All right, now to install the roller bushing pins, we're going to start them just a little bit with our hammer. Do your best to keep it square. 
All right, so once the pin's protruding into the spider, we're gonna take a thrust washer and we'll slide it over the pin. And then we can take our roller bushing and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Now, if you drive the pin through too far and you cannot fit the roller bushing on there, mount it back up into the vise, lightly tap on the pin until you obtain enough clearance to slide the roller bushing into place. So once we've got a thrust washer and a roller bushing in place, we're gonna take and set our spider on top of a flat surface like this. We're gonna take our rubber mallet and we're gonna slowly tap the pin up into the roller bushing. Now you don't wanna drive the pin completely through because we still need to mount an additional thrust washer on the top side of the roller bushing. Then we'll take our next thrust washer, we'll set it into place, and we'll begin to drive the pin till it's flush with the spider just like that. Then we'll remount this into the vise. We'll take our punch and our hammer and we're going to set the pin down just a little bit further so that it's flush with the button's journal. Okay, so once the pin has been set and is flush on both sides of the spider, we can go ahead and repeat the process for the remaining two ends of the spider. Next, we're gonna take the replacement buttons and we're going to press them into place on the spider using the vise. Now, you could use a hammer, but in doing so, the buttons will not seat squarely and we want them to sit in there as tight as possible. We don't want these to experience any premature wear because they were seated improperly. All right, so now that we've finished servicing the spider, we can move on to the movable sheath. Now, we need to inspect the weights. We're gonna check the length of them here for any divots grooves, excessive wear. Also, you wanna move the weight side to side and check the bushing for play. This one definitely has some play. So we're gonna get these replaced. So we'll need a 3 8 inch socket and our eighth inch Allen wrench. We're gonna remove the pin that retains all three of these and replace them with the new weights and the new pins. Once we've got the old shift weights out, we can begin to install the new ones. Now, when you do that, we want the pins to be installed the same way that they were removed, so the same direction. Now, once you get all three of these installed, you'll want to torque this fastener that retains the shift weights into the movable sheave and set it to 20 inch pounds. All right, so now that we've got our new shift weights installed, you can see that there's no play in these. So we're gonna flip this movable sheave over. We're gonna surface the face of the sheave. Now, we'll use some Scotch-Brite for this and a little bit of contact cleaner. We're gonna spray it off and then we're just gonna kinda of scrub it and we're gonna do it in a cross-hatch pattern. You'll see how it's done. All right now, as you can see, as we're servicing the, the, the face of the sheave here, we've, we've scrubbed it clean of the glazing from the belt. So if you're giving your sheaves an inspection and you notice that it's got a very dark coloration to it, almost a black hue, that lets you know that your sheaves are glazed and you will need to service them with some Scotch-Brite. So we're gonna continue to work our way around the face of the sheave and put in the crosshatch pattern. All right, so now that we've got our movable sheaves faces surfaced, we're gonna move on to the fixed sheave and we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna surface the face with our Scotch-Brite and some contact cleaner. All right, so now that we've got our clutch sheaves faces surfaced with the Scotch-Brite, we can now move on to servicing the needle bearing. Now, when it comes to the needle bearing, we do want to apply some grease, but a very, very, very small amount. We just want enough in there to lightly coat the needles inside of the bearing. Now, if we use too much grease, the grease is gonna come out of the bearing and it's gonna coat the sheaves and your belt's gonna slip right away and we definitely don't want that. Now, when you're greasing this, if you feel that you've got a little too much grease inside, wipe out the excess with your fingers. It'll definitely be worth your while. All right, so now that we've got all of our parts on the primary service, we can begin the reassembly. So we're gonna take our thrust washers for our needle bearing, and we will put them back on in the order that they were removed. And once you've got those on, we can place our removable sheave onto the assembly, followed by our spacer. Now this spacer has an orientation to it. The recessed side needs to be placed onto the shaft first. The side needs to face the fixed sheave. The other side's just flat. All right, so once we've got these components in place, we can get ready to reinstall the spider. Now, before we install the spider, we do need to apply some Loctite to the threads. This is where our primer 70-80-80 is gonna come into play in the 620 retaining compound. Now, when you apply these to the threads, the service manual states that you need to do one before the other and they need to be 90 degrees apart. So we're gonna first start with the 620, then 90 degrees to the right side of that or clockwise, we'll be applying some of the 7088. Now, this stuff sets up incredibly quickly, so we're going to apply this just before 
we begin to have all of our tools set up so that we can get the, the spider thread out, threaded on. Now when you're threading the spider onto the shaft, you want to make sure that you know where your marks are, your indexing marks are that we made earlier. Because these, once this is on the shaft, it will move independently of the primary's movable sheath. So you want to make sure that you rotate these together so that once they're installed, our indexing marks line up. Now remember that once you apply the Loctite, you're going to thread the spider onto the assembly and you're going to torque it to 290 foot-pounds. Then you're going to reapply a small amount of the Loctite and torque the spider's nut to 250 foot-pounds. All right, so we're back here in the studio. We just finished installing the spider and spider's nut onto the primary assembly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but we don't have a torque wrench that goes up to 290 foot-pounds. So we used the largest one that we had, which goes up to 220 foot-pounds, and applied that amount of torque to the spider. And then we took our breaker bar with a long cheater bar and began to apply some more torque to it. So what we did is we lined up the marks on our spider with the mark on our fixed sheath. And that lets us know that we have put everything back to the way that it was when we disassembled it. Now, I highly recommend that you follow the procedures and instructions that are given to you in the service manual just to make sure that you get everything right. All right, so the next step for this is to remove the drive clutch taper holding tool. So we're gonna mount this back into the vise, take the taper adapter tool out, and then we need to place this back into our clutch compression tool reinstall the limiter spacers, the spring, and then the spider cover, and we're gonna torque the spider cover fastener bolts to nine foot-pounds. All right, that's it. That's how we rebuild the primary. So now we can move on to the secondary clutch. Be sure to check out part two of this series where we show you how to rebuild the secondary clutch.